Hello, Leo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. If Leo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. All right, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I'm merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Leo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And wow, two of cups. Way to go. Good, good job. That is a that is a wonderful way to begin. That's real happiness. That's real love right there. But let's put it into some context and see where it might be coming from or how we can fully activate it, right? Oof, look at that. We've got some court cards, we've got some majors. Let's select our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Smith Waite Tarot. And this is just one card that we select at random. We're not going to look at it until the very end. We'll put Mr. Ed right there on top. And hopefully that card will tie everything together. Give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. Let's look at this now. This is good. Uh, we've got uh, Major. Major, Major. We've got our Trinity of Major Arcana. I like that. We've got just a little bit of fire at the end. We've got some water. We've got some air. This is, this is some air we don't want. Um, and then we've got some some earth. Okay. So this is, this is quite interesting. The what we've got going on. We've got this potential for real love, real happiness. This is really nice, right? We've got the sun, we've got love, this is freedom, this is beauty, this is joy, but we've got this air that we need to get, kind of need to get the heck out of here. There's something in your life keeping you back from this joy and this, this happiness that is yours, right? You've got that sun card, that is you, uh, coming into this situation, uh, maybe we are coming into a situation expecting two of cups, expecting love and joy and beauty. Well, what we're getting is a ten. We're getting restriction. We're getting um, we're getting hemmed in, right? We're being restrained. We're being fenced in. We're being caged. Oh, Leo, you're a lion that doesn't like to be caged. So we need to get out of this. So we're taking that nine, we're going back, or we're taking that 10, I should say, dialing it back to a nine. We're kind of backing up slowly out of the cage like a cartoon. Um, and this, I think, is, is us turning around and getting the heck out of there. You're going to walk into a situation that you might be expecting love and beauty and joy and happiness, but it ain't. Right? And you will very quickly see that it ain't. Okay? Because... You have this vision. You have this spiritual vision. This foresight. This is the Knight of Pentacles. You know in a very practical way where your life is going. You know what things should look like out here. You're blazing a trail here with this fire. There's fire in here. right? Fire of earth. You're blazing this new trail. You know what sort of things to expect. Right? King of the jungle and everything. You, you know what should be out here. You know what things belong here. So when you see this kind of, almost a, a gilded cage here, uh-uh, you know better. You're slowly backing out of it. Slow, just maybe not so slow, but you're getting that. You're getting out of there, right? And as you back up, it's like one of those, one of those tire strips in a parking garage. You don't want to back up. You'll, you'll pop your tires. You can only go, maybe it's kind of like that. It's like a barbed kind of thing. Getting out of it might cause a little bit of pain, but you need to. Okay. So with this earth energy here, I wonder if you're walking into an employment situation, if you're walking into some sort of a, a business thing or, or a job, or you've agreed to something 
that you really thought was going to allow you to keep shining your light. Here you are, king of the jungle, just kind of roaming around like you own the place. Because you do, right? Maybe literally, maybe you do. Maybe this is a business thing that you own this business. Maybe this is yours. Here we have a princess of discs down beneath everything. This is your, your machine. This is your, your business. Maybe you're a contractor, sole proprietor. Maybe this is a business that you own. Uh, but either way, you are an autonomous spiritual being. You, you make decisions for your life of what is best for you. We could be thinking we're walking into this wonderful oasis and then someone tries to throw this cage over us, throw this net over us. Well, we're going to have to get out of there. Could be a business thing. Could be a bad business deal. Could be a bad contract, a bad investment. It could be, um, you know, some employment uh, situation. Taking a promotion that we thought was going to be one thing. Once we get there, it seems something completely different, something very restrictive. Backing out might hurt. It might, you might kind of take a little bit of a loss if you, when you back out of this thing. That's okay. That's nothing compared to what it would be if you stay. Right. Um, so what we have with the princess of pentacles at the bottom here, this is our best interest. We have our best interest at heart. This is we want to be successful. We want to generate wealth or income or success or, or whatever this is, what kind of, whatever kind of relationship this is. We're looking to make it very abundant. We obviously want the, the biggest return on our investment as we can. We, I wouldn't do this if, if I thought it was just going to make my position worse, right? So we're going into this knowing that we are, we're here because we're trying to grow, we're trying to expand, we're trying to improve, we want abundance and, and progress. Maybe it's emotional, spiritual, religious, maybe it's a romantic thing, maybe it's a business thing. Okay, whatever it is. There's a physical component to it, so maybe it's moving in with this person. Maybe it's entering into this business contract, right? Maybe it is agreeing to do this thing with your friends or something. Once we get there, we realize it ain't what we wanted. So we have to back out. Maybe backing out means you lose your deposit. Maybe it means that they, you've already invested the day or two of time or whatever. You're not getting that back. So there's, there's a little bit of this pain on the, the escape. But that's okay, because you are still whole. The universe will make you whole. Because what we're, what we're doing is we're, we're mitigating any kind of a loss that we might find over here. And we are trying to minimize any of the damage that this might cause. We still got this Two of Cups. We're still out here looking for the perfect kind of relation. We're still, it doesn't, it doesn't, this situation doesn't cause us to lose any hope. We're still out here, sun with two of cups. Now we're a sun. We're just, we're just in our orbit. We're just trying to find our place in the, in the universe. We're just trying to find, this sun is trying to find the right orbit. Right. You're trying to find your place, and you're doing it with love. You're doing it with a smile. You're confident in yourself. You know, hey, this was a bad deal. I'm backing out of it. I'm going to go along my merry way. And the universe rewards that kind of attitude, that kind of optimism, that confidence, that trust. It's almost like a, a joy. It's almost like a fool energy. I wonder if the mystery card will be the fool. We're just kind of frolicking along our merry way. Oh, there's a bear trap there. I better get out of the bear trap, and I'm just going to keep going on my merry way. Um, you're eventually going to come to those things that are meant for you. You will eventually find where you can have this, the most love, the best connection, right? This doesn't have to be romantic love. This is the love of, of uniting with your purpose, finding meaning in what you're doing, finding the right place for you, finding your, your orbit. So it's time here we look at the we look at the, um, I think they were, they were kind of like that. Uh, we look at the Wheel of Fortune in the position of our environment. This is the timing. 
This is kind of divine timing, you know. Eventually, your time will come. We realize that this was not for us, so we're getting out of this. We have to keep moving along the wheel. Eventually, we're going to come to what is meant for us. And here, here we have a very interesting combination of cards. This is fire of water. This is water of fire. It's like an inside out kind of thing. Very interesting here. But it's time to keep the wheel turning. It's time to keep traveling in your orbit. Don't get back out of this. Go around it. Let's keep going, right? Because what we're getting to is here. First, we have the Knight of Cups, fire of water. This is you expressing your love. This is you effectively uh, showing others that you love them, that they love you. It's the, the communication, not verbally, not with words, but through our actions, right? This, you can see they're kind of, they, they're taking that, that vessel with the little crab in there and they're, they're bringing it as an offering. You're showing the universe that you're ready for this two of cups. You're ready for happiness. You're ready for love in whatever form you are, you know, trying to get it romantically, platonically, business, career, creatively, spiritually, whatever. You're looking for that perfect union. So you're, you're showing others, you're demonstrating, right, that you're, that you're ready for this. And now we've got the water of fire. I feel like this is, um, this is now showing that we're capable of making decisions. We're capable of, of living a life that is based on this love. Now the water's within us. Now the water is what is fueling our intentions, fueling our choices, fueling our creativity. This, these two are real happiness. This is how you make happiness. By showing our intentions, showing our love and affection by, you know, extending, giving and receiving the water energy and then using that as the basis for our creativity. It's what inspires us. We're moved, we're motivated by love, by this connection. That's happiness. So achieving this two of cups, this kind of love, this connection, this union is going to be how you go about generating happiness perpetually right? It's inside out. This is just, it's constant flow. And this is, this is really beautiful. The mechanism of this is something that you're discovering and it is, it is true happiness. And this is how you, this is how you keep that happiness going, right? Keep it flowing. The happiness generator. I like that a lot. Let's look at the mystery card though. I'm curious, um, curious what this might, might provide for us. Maybe it'll be the lover's card. Maybe it'll be more water energy, but I, I kind of would like to see something, um, something earth related, maybe a six of pentacles, maybe another world card, maybe the empress card. Thank you, Mr. Ed, for your assistance. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a definite um, prediction. A couple of possibilities. Well, let's just take a look. Hmm. No, it's the Knight of Pentacles again. It is, it is this figure again. So I wonder. I think this is really, this is the, the, this is what we need to focus on, this spiritual vision. You know what you're wanting to create. You know that you want this life that is just like this reciprocating happiness generator. That's, this is what we're looking for in whatever form it takes, whether it's business or, or family. It's probably all of it, right? It's, it's everything. It's not just one component of life or one area. But we need to keep on moving. When something like this doesn't have what we need, we just keep traveling, right? Both of these, we need to come back to our vision, re-experience our vision and keep moving, right? 
We can have these little pods and when you, you think something like this is this is where it is, this is what we're gonna find, this is this is it, we've got it. Oh nope, it's a it's a cage, it's a trap, it's a snare. Let's get out of here, right? Let's back out of this cage. Let's look at the vision again, right? Let's look at the, the spiritual map. And then let's keep going. You don't have to settle for what's not meant for you. The true happiness, the true functional happiness life, uh, the, the happiness generator is out there. But don't stop in the inside of this cage, right? We need to keep moving. We need to back out and then reassess and keep moving forward. I think that's very important. Uh, let's do one thing before we go. Let's consult the I Ching. Uh, this seems like a good kind of a, a good problem for the E to help us with. And these are the 64 hexagrams that represent the, the wisdom of the ancient Chinese sages and their connection with spirit or with source. And this is definitely not the traditional way of casting a hexagram, all right, but it works for us in our context. Let's see what we have. 14, great possession from the source, creating success. Great possession from the source, creating success. Well, interesting what we have. I want to just point this out um, quickly, is that uh, I don't know how familiar anyone is with the I Ching, but we have, we have a hexagram, we have six lines. The bottom three lines, right, represent heaven. Represent, kind of this, kind of the universe right? The heavens. Um, and the top hexagram, these three lines, solid, a broken, and a solid line, represent the sun, the solar fire, the inner clarity, great possession. What you possess is your connection with source and knowing what you're, knowing that you're going to achieve this divine destiny, your cosmic place, your orbit that we talked about, right? That is your possession. Your possession is your connection with this clarity, this inner clarity. You're moved by your connection from source. See, it says, from the source, creating success. It's very, very powerful. Uh, it says, you are rich either in material goods or in knowledge, wisdom, power, energy, talent, or relationships. Whatever form it takes, you have something real and potent in your possession. That which you have or are, you can give. Okay, give. This pure potential is an opening to source and a promise of abundance. See, it's coming and going. It's inside, outside. Given all you have, who will you be? How can you affirm and support what is good? Well, for one thing, it's by not accepting that which is bad for you, right? Reconnect with source, check in with that spiritual map, and, and keep moving forward because you are in the possession, the great possession of this, this connection with source, this clarity, this guiding principle. I really like this reading for you, Leo. I think it's, I think it's very appropriate. I think it's very important right now. We are going to do an extended. If you would like to stick around, just click on the link up in the corner. That will give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Leo, but for every sign. So you can cross-watch, uh, check your other placements. Um, new readings come out every day, 6 a.m. Chicago time. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of the future readings. I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for letting me read for you. And thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.